It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, where children are the future. That cop was so drunk, he waved traffic into his pants. Look, a pig on a hog. Boink, boink. Bang, bang. Hope that badge is bulletproof. That's the car where they keep the bribes. Car 79, we got a black man minding his own business. Meanwhile, on the other side of town... I am your host, a stimulator, and October 15th marked the 50th fucking anniversary of the founding of one of the most infamous. The state assembly was in the midst of a heated debate when the young Negroes, armed with loaded rifles, shotguns, and pistols, marched into the Capitol. Iconic. That look, you know, the big afro, the leather jacket, the shades. Politically sophisticated. They were the ones that really came out and started uh, showing us how to uh, organized successfully and all around badass revolutionary organizations in the history of the united snakes the black panther party this anniversary comes at a particularly salient moment in motherfucking history in the united snakes a growing awareness of police brutality and systematic racism has been thrust into the mainstream by the black lives matter movement while street level rebellions to white supremacist police terror have been lighting up urban city centers at a frequency not seen since the 1960s Over the past two and a half years, black-led uprisings have kicked off in Ferguson, Baltimore, Milwaukee, and most recently, Charlotte, North Carolina. The Panthers emerged during a similarly tumultuous era, at a time where the reformist discourse of the Southern rural-based civil rights movement was rapidly giving way to the righteous anger and militancy of the primarily urban-based black power movement. Back in the summer of 1964, 50 years before Ferguson, Pick shot and killed 15-year-old black youth James Powell, leading to six nights of intense fucking riots in Harlem. And 50 years before Baltimore came the Watts Rebellion, an even more intense six days of rioting, which, surprise, surprise, was provoked by an incident of racist police brutality at the hands of the LA fucking Pig D. Over the next three summers, riots broke out at a rate of nearly one per month. Once the black people in the slums got up on their legs and defied the white police, a tremor of self-recognition seemed to go all through the Negro world. Burn, baby, burn. Ground out. We shall overcome. This wave of insurrectionary motherfucking rage reaches high watermark in April of 68 in the nights following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. with incendiary riots breaking out in over 100 cities across the United Snakes in what remains to this day the largest display of popular unrest seen in the country since the Civil War. The Panthers effectively seized this widespread sense of black anger and outrage and channeled it into sustained revolutionary organizing. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover today asserted that the Black Panthers represent the greatest internal threat to the nation. At its height, the Black Panthers had over 10,000 members organized into dozens of chapters across the country. They say a Black Panther is born every minute in the ghetto. Throw in the fact that the United Snakes was, at the time, engaged in a deeply unpopular and socially polarizing war in Vietnam, in which thousands of soldiers were going AWOL, and some were even fragging their fucking officers. Do it. And you can begin to see why the state was shitting its proverbial pants. But while that crazy fuck J. Edgar Hoover and his racist crackers at the FBI were at the time most terrified by the Panthers' so-called survival pending revolution programs, such as their free breakfast for poor school children, feed about 10,000 uh, across the country each day. Today, they are most widely remembered for their militaristic regalia and their embrace of armed self-defense and community patrols, which they carried out as a self-defense measure against racist pigs. Is that gun loaded, boy? I tell you, officer, it wasn't, but now it is. Many of the white-knuckled racist dipshits who lie awake at night stressing about Obama taking away their guns Come and get them, Obama! would no doubt choke on their fucking mayonnaise sandwiches to learn that it was the GOP's cowboy mascot, the old Gipper himself, Ronnie fucking Reagan, Fuck Ronald Reagan, who back in 1967 as governor of California seized on the widespread sense of white panic provoked by the Panthers' armed community patrols and used it as an excuse to, uh, take away peeps' guns. I don't think that loaded guns is the way to solve a problem that should be solved between people of goodwill. And anyone who would approve of this kind of demonstration must be out of their mind. 
In our current age of intense corporate and social media saturation, in which black-led urban uprisings are again becoming a frequent response to rampant police killings, white reaction is once more rearing its ugly fucking head, with many pointing to the administration of Barack Hussein Obama either as proof that the United Snakes has evolved into a post-racial society Surprise! Study finds people don't understand how racism works or else to frantically accuse him of trying to start a race war. A former federal prosecutor is suing. The suit accuses all of them of inciting a race war and seeks damages of more than $2 billion. But while pig apologists of the Blue Lives Matter variety endlessly try to paint victims of police terror and those who participate in riots as thugs or mindless criminals, their collective shock and indignant confusion over why black youth would be angry enough to loot or burn down shops speaks fucking volumes. The fact of the matter is that the race war has been raging for hundreds of years. Ever since white Europeans brought the first enslaved Africans over to Turtle Island in chains and forced them to farm the very land they'd stolen through the genocide of its original inhabitants. Settler colonial capitalism is itself a fucking race war, at the same time as it's a perpetual class war waged by those on the top against those at the bottom. So people shouldn't be so fucking shocked when those at the bottom decide to fight back. We don't hate the motherfucker white people, we hate the oppressor, whether he be white, black, brown, or yellow. In fact, they should fucking join in and help overthrow this racist fucking system once and for all.